What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUp Essentials for iPad. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about groups and components and why they're really important and can save you a ton of time modeling repeating objects in SketchUp. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So one thing we haven't really talked about up to this point is working with the way that geometry merges together. And then also um, some tools around that that can really make our lives easier. So the first thing I wanna talk about is the way that geometry merges. So let's say that I was to come in here and I was to select this box right here. So notice how um, the, the faces are all shaded like this. Well, if I was to take this box, and by the way, notice how these faces are shaded as well. So I can select the individual parts and pieces of this object, right? And so what that means is that means that if I was to take this box and move it, so I'm just gonna use the move tool, just move it right here, and then try to move this selection away, notice what's gonna happen is those faces are going to merge together, right? And so what that means is that means that geometry is going to stick together. Um, we call it sticky geometry. And that means that now these two objects have kind of been merged in one object. And so that can make editing and making changes really difficult. And so one of the things that we usually like to do is we usually like to take all of this geometry, right? And I'm gonna make sure I have all of this selected in here like this. And what we can do inside of SketchUp for iPad is there's an option down here at the bottom of the page for create group. And so as soon as I tap on this, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all of that geometry that we have selected in here and it's going to group it together. So now, I mean, it's gonna act the same as it was before, but notice how if I click on the individual faces in here, nothing's happening because this object is basically grouped. So you can still edit those individual faces that are in here, but notice how what I have to do is I have to double tap in order to go inside of this group. And now I can edit the individual parts and pieces. So this is basically almost like inside of a container. And then I can just tap back outside of it in order to get out of that. Well, what that means is that means that now this object is no longer just made up of raw geometry. So like faces and edges and things like that. That means that now if I was to take this object, move it over here like this, and then move it away, notice how nothing is merging, right? Because that's because this geometry is in a group and this geometry is not in a group. So that means that the faces are no longer existing in the same space without something being grouped together so they don't merge anymore. And so practically speaking, this is something that we like to do with our walls inside of SketchUp as well. So let's say for example, that I was to draw just a simple rectangle. Let's say I was to offset it in, in order to create a wall like this. And so usually when we create something like a wall, what we're gonna do, right, is we're gonna take a door frame. So something that's maybe like three foot by seven foot. And then we're gonna push pull it to the backside of this object in order to cut an opening. Well then once we've done that, we're gonna model a door inside of that opening. But the problem is if I come in here and I start modeling the door right now, we're gonna have the same issue we did before where this door geometry has kind of merged together with the face geometry. So you can kind of see it right there when it comes off of the wall. That's not necessarily what we want, right? So what we want instead is before we draw this door, we wanna take this wall and we wanna put it in a group. So we're gonna take this whole thing and we're just gonna group it like this. So if I tap on group, notice how now I can come in here and I can start adding that door. And I can start modeling out things like the frame, like this. So I would push pull the frame back inside of my model, but then I would take that frame and I would group it as well. And so what I'm doing is I'm just keeping all of my geometry in here. Whoops, we're gonna wanna select the other way. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping all of this geometry separate. So now, because these two things are grouped, if I needed to edit my door or my frame, notice how this is a completely separate object inside of SketchUp. Now, let's talk about something else this is, that is also going to be a huge time saver for you. So not only is there the ability to edit groups like this, so this is basically just us partitioning geometry off so that things are kind of separate, you can also create what's known as a component. And so what a component is, is a component is basically a group that's linked to the other copies of the group. So um, it, it, it's a smarter version of a group, basically. So let's say that I was to take this object and create a cube 
like this. We'll go ahead and we'll select it. Well, in this case, instead of clicking on this option right here for a group, what we want to do instead is we want to click on this option right here, and that is going to allow us to make a component. And so notice how when we tap on make component, it's already asking us for some additional information. Like for example, it's asking us for a component name, and then you can also add in some other things, which we're not gonna worry about too much for right now. Um, in this case, what we wanna do though, is we wanna name this a box. So, we'll just write box in here and click on create. And so what we've done is we've created a component in here. And so if we were to go into our outliner, which we're not gonna to talk too much about for right now, but if we were to go into our outliner right here, notice how our box shows up differently than the other groups that we've created. That's because this is indicating to us that this object is a component. So it's got the three boxes right here instead of the one. Well, what that means is now, let's say that we were to make a couple copies of this. So I'm gonna make a copy and then we'll make another copy like this. So with our grouped objects, right, that if we were to edit one of these, it wouldn't really matter for the other objects. But for a component, if I'm to tap in here, notice how when I tap on this surface right here, this surface is being selected, but also these surfaces are being collected, selected. That's because these are instances of this component. So what that means is that means if I was to adjust one of these, we'll do this from center. But if I was to make a change to one of these, notice how the other ones are going to change as well. That's because these are all instances of this component. So this is really powerful because it means if there's anything in your model that's going to repeat. So if you were to make a change to one object and there's more than one of them in your scene, then you would have to change each one of them individually, right? But if you use components, these are all linked together, meaning that any of those adjustments are going to be applied to all of the objects like this. And so one thing to note about that is if you have created some components, and we're gonna go outside of this group for a second, but one thing to note about that is if you have create, created components, sometimes after you've created them, you want some of them to act differently than others. So let's say that we were to take this cylinder right here and make it a component. And we'll just call it, we'll just call it cylinder and we'll create this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a few copies of this. And so right now, these are all instances of this object, right? So if you go into your entity info, notice how it's going to tell you that there's four of these in the model and the definition name is cylinder. So you can see that these are components. Well, if I was to make an adjustment, right? So let's say I was to tap in here and adjust this surface. We'll go about center like this. Notice how all of these are going to change. But what happens if after you've done that, you want a couple of them to act differently than the others? Well, what you can do is you can select them. So I'm just gonna do a little selection right here. You can click on the little drop down right here and click on the option for make unique. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna take the two instances of the component that you have selected and it's going to make them unique copies. So now, we jump back into our outliner for a second, notice how I have a cylinder and a cylinder, but then the two I selected now have a name of cylinder one, right? What that means is that means it took these two um, cylinders and it made them unique copies or unique components of the cylinder object. So what that means is that means that now if I come in here, I make an adjustment. So let's say that we were to select this face right here. I just want this top face. We were to move it down notice how only that other object right here is adjusting along with this. So now these two objects are completely unique from these two objects, meaning any changes you make to these are only gonna be reflected across these two right here. Any changes you make to these, so let's say, for example, that we were to do an offset, and we were to extrude this down, notice how that change is only happening here and here. And so as a general rule, you use components when you have anything that you're going to have more than one copy of, right? So anything where you might want to change more than one of them at once, make them components. Um, you can group 
objects like walls, like for example, if I was to draw the outside walls of this house, I'm not going to make a copy of that. So I don't really need it to be a component. A lot of people make those components anyway. That's totally fine. But you can use groups if you're just separating geometry that's not going to repeat inside of SketchUp. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions about anything we talked about. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.